the one thing we have control over is what we do with our money and what we do with our time. We still have control over that. Well, we not, still I'm have not, control not. over that. So the question becomes, what is the black community going to use their disposable income to build for themselves? That's the question. The question is not what we can get politicians to do for us. That's a secondary question. And that's a secondary question for everybody but black people. Black people are the only people whose primary strategy is to beg the politicians to do it for us. Nobody else has that as a primary strategy. Chinese build for themselves. Getting the politicians to do things is second. Arabs build for themselves. Trying to get the politicians to do something is separate. Black people are the only people who voting is the most important thing we do. Voting is the most important thing black people do because we have no other strategies. We have no other blueprint. We have no other agenda because we're disorganized and we like being disorganized because we hate each other. So for us, voting is more important for us than everybody else, even though we get nothing out of it and everybody else does because we have no other solution in play. Nothing. Even if the Chinese don't get what they want from the president, if they don't get what they want from the governor. They already have solutions in place for themselves. They have institutions and systems. Arabs got institutions and systems. Jews have institutions and systems. Latinos got institutions and systems. Black people don't have no institutions or no systems. Our entire strategy is beg the politicians. Vote. That's our whole thing is vote. Okay, so someone like me, right? I don't have the funds per se to to do something like that. And and like in the well, world it, it's not individual though. It ain't about what you can do. It's about what we're going to do together. Nothing is in no solution is based on one person. No solution. You feel me? So the question yeah, is, I, what is the black community of Utica going to do about this? That's what it. Not you. Not me. What are the people gonna, going to do? They're not going to do anything but complain. Well, see, then, then we can't move forward. Then we can't move forward because, see, black people have a learned helplessness thing. We also have a psychological hopelessness thing. We don't like to admit it, though. Black people do not like to admit that we are psychologically hopeless. You can tell by our behavior. We don't do anything collectively for ourselves, and we haven't in a long time. We do a bunch of events. That's all we do. Events, events, events. Event for this, event for that, event for this, event for that. Million Man March for one day. No systems, no movements, no institutions. And that's why nobody got to respect us. You got to respect us. Respect them for what? They're not going to do nothing. We'll riot for a day. We'll tear some shit down. We'll take a whole month to tear some shit down, but we won't take a week to build anything up. Look at all the riots we had as a result of police genocide. Look at all the riots we have. And I'm not against the riot because that's how you get the power structure's attention to let them know you're tired of their shit. So I'm not against the riot. But where was the revolution? Where was the institutional revolution to build something after we tore everything down. It's easy to tear shit down. I'm not impressed with black people who can loot and burn and break up shit. A toddler can do that. A toddler can do that. But a toddler can't build. When are we going to do something for ourselves with this $2 trillion in spending power we have? That's the one question that is never discussed. Look at all the YouTube videos. Look at all the Instagram Pokes, look at all the memes. You rarely hear a serious conversation on what we're going to do for ourselves. That's the one conversation black people don't want to have outside of having fun. We always talking about vacations. We always talking about parties. We always talking about going to buy something, going to party. What are we going to do for ourselves with our money? That is the elephant in the room. And the question is nothing because black people don't have enough collective love. We don't love. E it takes love to want to sacrifice. Right. And we have to be guaranteed a victory in order to struggle. That is cowardice. That's like saying, yo, you got to go fight that dude over there. He picking with your little sister. Well, I can't fight him unless I know I'm going to win. What the hell is that? Nobody can predict an outcome. It's like a boxer getting in the ring. When you walk in that ring, you don't know if you can beat him, but you're going to do your best. You have enough courage to try. Black people saying, I don't have no courage to try. Black people saying, I'm not trying shit unless you can guarantee me we're going to succeed. I'm not going to try. And that's yeah, black people. No sure. confidence in self. Zero hope in each other. And so what we do, we try to escape blackness 
by bunny hopping. We try to escape blackness by marrying, uh, you know, by saying we ain't black. We pretendians. We will do anything instead of solving our problems as black people. We would just rather try not to be black. That's our strategy. I'm just going to do whatever I can to try not to be black. I'm a pass as white or I'm a marry a white person. I'm going to be a pretendian. You know, I'm going to say I'm not from Africa. Whatever I can do to get away from being black because we have no hope. That's how most of us think. Okay. And it, 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 it's sad, brother. It's sad. And it ain't getting no better. It, it, it ain't getting no better. Like they have done an excellent job convincing us that it's useless, absolutely useless to fight as black people. You better fight as a Muslim, fight as a Christian, fight as a minority. Don't fight as a black person because nobody likes y'all and nobody wants to be with y'all. And most of us, we're, we're psychologically de defeated. And any solution we try to come up with, you got to make sure you don't have people in there who are going to infect your movement with negative criticism and negative thinking, you know, because that's what the YouTube and struggle streamers are all about. They're all about criticizing and condemning anything while they do nothing at all. That's that's what they specialize in. They will make a million videos tearing down what you're trying to do for the people while they themselves do nothing at all. That's what they specialize in. The YouTube and struggle streamer community is a collective self-hatred campaign. That's that's all they do. It's fine people to talk about while they do nothing. So it don't look good, my brother, but I'm going to tell you this, though. It's going to get worse if we don't make it get better. The question is, are black people going to use this time, this galactic, this, 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 you know, a uh, 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 profound, universal, cosmological time? Are we going to use this? To try to get ourselves out. Of, I don't think it's a coincidence that Pluto goes into Aquarius less than two weeks after the election. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. Once this election is over, all hell is going to hit the fan. All hell is going to hit the fan. For, and I'm talking from a universal perspective, from a spiritual level. It's time for the world to be recalibrated. There's going to be a universal recalibration of power. You had the greatest black revolution and the greatest white revolution. You had the American revolution and the Haitian revolution the last time Pluto was in Aquarius. I, I mean, I, I feel that I feel it needs to be something because I just don't I just don't understand because like the reason why the reason based behind my question is this, okay? You have like a lot of people they 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 believe in, you know, uplifting the kids and everything like that me personally i don't believe that you going along with that platform i don't believe you do that as far as elementary schools i feel like you, you, you should reach the kids as far as when they get to the adolescent stages when you're in junior high because that's when they start making de certain decisions well we should have their mind before that though because right. if you have their mind before that you don't have to worry about them making the bad decisions you don't you don't think that as a as a, as someone who's like in them elementary ages, you know, a lot of them will forget. Like, okay, say say I come, I, I'm I'm like a book buddy. I come through and I, I'm assigned this one kid. You know, a bunch of us we sign certain kids. You know, we helping them read, write, stuff like that in the school. I believe that you know by the time they get to them stages where they're influenced by things as far as entertainment and music and everything like that, they they probably forget some of the things that I, that I talked. About. The well, the thing day. is, we're not disagreeing. I'm just saying you start them as soon as they're born. What okay. you're saying is you intensify it during that adolescent period because that's when we can lose them. Right. So, no, I agree with you on that. I'm just saying we start as soon as they're born. But I agree with you. We need to intensify around that because the way that America has set this whole uh, psychological indoctrination system up, is they hitting our kids with the rainbow agenda as soon as they get into kindergarten. They hitting them hard. They hitting them hard because they want to make sure when your child is old enough to procreate, when your child is old enough to procreate, we're going to make sure they don't want to. Right. You see what I'm saying? 
We're going to make sure that he ain't even think about no girls when he turned 12. She not even think about no boys when she turned 12 because we didn't already turned them out. Right. That You see you, you see what I'm saying? And, and we're going to make sure that they don't become no type of black activists because we're not even going to tell them what we did to their ancestors. They're not going to learn about no slavery, no racism. They're not getting no Jim Crow, no separate but equal. They're not getting none of that. So they're going to make sure that they are politically docile and sexually confused before they graduate. Absolutely. And the saddest thing about all of this is not what the school system is doing. The saddest thing about all this, we're not going to do anything for ourselves. That's the sad. As bad as the schools are, once we finish talking about the school system, we got to look in the mirror and say, why we don't have our own. True. You feel me? At the end of the day, black people have enough money to radically transform our reality if we wanted to. $30 billion on fake hair, perms, and weave, and you got black girls out here selling their body just to pay rent? And black women are spending that kind of money on fake hair that's killing them with fibroid tumors and skull cancer? Yeah. It's hard to care about a people who don't care about themselves. It is hard to care about a people who don't care about themselves. And these other groups, they don't care about us anyway. They, like, they don't care about us anyway. And then on top of that, we just give the world excuses after excuses to not even want to be bothered with us. I mean, half our problems are solvable by ourselves. But we're not solving them because we want the white man to solve them because we want to spend our money on having fun. Black people are overgrown children. We behave like 30, 40, 50, and 60 year old toddlers. That's how we behave. We all about fun and fashion, pleasure and enjoyment. That's our whole life. Look at the rappers. Look at them. Overgrown children, chains, cars, parties, liquor, weed. And you come from a ghetto without a single black institution in it. Without a single black institution in it. But you got a hundred thousand dollar chain on. But you got a hundred thousand dollar chain on. You right. Somebody just had on a five million dollar watch, and you come from a ghetto that ain't got a single school in it or nothing. What that tells you, because I don't want to demonize the celebrities, because they're no different than us. Take all the celebrities, put them back in poverty, and switch them out with black people in poverty. And guess what? You will have the same thing. Because every black person in America is willing to sell out the community to do better for themselves. Period. Period. Sure. That's why I don't go too far into demonizing the celebrities. Switch out LeBron. Switch out Oprah. Switch out Jay-Z. Switch out Puff. Switch out Bob Johnson. Switch out Serena. Switch out Rihanna. Switch out all the black billionaires. Kanye. Well, switch them out. And guess what? Switch them out right now and you will have the same thing because most black people have no problem selling out their people to get rich. Most of us will do it in a heartbeat. And that's why celebrities do not respond to criticism because most of them are intelligent enough to know that if you were offered what I was offered, you would have did it too. Well, LeBron built a school. No, he did not. That is a public school. LeBron James did not build a school. That is a lie. The LeBron James School is a public school. It is paid for by the taxpayers of the state of Ohio. He does not have a school. He does provide incentives. He pays for them to go to college and their parents. He does a lot of good incentives. So I don't have an issue with his incentive. It is not his school. He does not own it. He did not build it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought he actually built it. No celebrity, to my knowledge, has an independent school for black children. No celebrity, not a basketball player, not a football player, not an actor, not a rapper, not a dancer, not a singer. I don't know of a single celebrity with an independent school for black children. I don't know one. Okay. A lot of charter schools, nothing independent for their own children. Right. OK. You taught me something. I didn't know that. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, you... I appreciate your time. Brother. No problem, know, King. No problem. Be All safe. Right. All right. Be All cute. right now. And nobody better ever call LeBron James an activist again. You better never tell me LeBron James is an activist. Get the hell out of my face with that. I love the brother. Good father. Good role model. He is not no activist. There's no way in hell you are activist and you 
sided with a nation that's conducting those types of crimes against another people. He is not an activist.